What up boys and girls and everything in between. In this video, we are going to scrape, we're going to fetch some facts about cats. We're going to store them into a Mongo database. And on top of that, we're going to build a simple JSON API so we can retrieve um, simultaneously because we're going to spin up the cat facts in another go routine asynchronously. And uh, on top of that, we're going to build a JSON API that can uh, fetch all the facts we are scraping. But before we continue, if you're not subscribed yet to my channel and you like the content, consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments and jump into the Discord community. And for the people that really want to level up as a Go backend systems distributed engineer, check out my Patreon page. Um, let me know what you think about that. Let's go. So basically I have this uh, beautiful uh, readme already typed out for you guys. Um, so it's going to be a little bit easier. For MongoDB, we are going to use Docker, of course, because we're not going to hassle with installing that on our machine. So we're going to use Docker. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to yank this line. I'm going to paste it in. Wait, let me paste it in again. Docker PS, that should be fine. So MongoDB is already running. Then we have this, the dependencies we need for uh, using Mongo, uh, Mongo driver for Golang. is basically these two guys we need to install. So I'm going to basically uh, yank the first one, paste that in. Uh, let me clear the screen. Then I'm going to yank the second one, copy the second one, paste that in. What's going on here? It's VS Code with the clipboard shenanigans, so I'm going to copy it manually. Hey, it is what it is sometimes. So we're going to say copy here, boom, uh, paste it in. And uh, as usual, I'm going to basically put uh, this simple project on GitHub and the link will be in the description so you can just follow along. Okay, so we have the BSON, very important. It's basically the uh, JSON representation uh, of our document in uh, MongoDB. So we have uh, Docker running. We have these two things installed. That's perfectly fine. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab this um, this Mongo Golang quick start. I basically pasted in here because hey, I cannot remember all the time um, how we're going to in initialize the client. So let's go to main. Let's paste it in. And we're going to see that we have uh, Mongo Connect and all that shenanigans going on. The problem is, even if I save, VS Code will not import it. Uh, but that's not big of a deal. So I'm going to open up my uh, README. And I'm going to basically try to copy this. And uh, do it manually, actually. Okay, it's not working. Do it again. That's fine. Delete these. Go get thingies. Some um, quotes. Boom. All right, that's fine. Let me delete the screen. Just like that. Okay, cool. The next thing we need is this options thingy, uh, which is basically another package. It's going to be Mongo options, just like that, and it's all fine. So now we have this client here. So let me see uh, if it's going to work. We're going to say FMT, print a line if there are no errors. Just like that. Uh, go run main.go, and let's see. I think that should be good. <clears throat> all right. Cool. The next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to make a simple uh, cat fact worker that basically going to spin up uh, asynchronously alongside with our JSON API and it's basically going to fetch facts about cats. Hey. So we're going to say type, um, I'm going to call it worker or maybe let's make it more explicit cat fact or worker. Uh, that's going to be a structure. And we're going to actually embed uh, a client, not embed, but just add a client to it. And it's going to be a Mongo client, just like that. Then we're going to make a constructor. So we're going to say new cat fact uh, worker. <clears throat> I'm going to say C. I'm going to give it an argument. That's going to be the Mongo client pointer. And we're going to return um, a pointer to the cat fact worker, right? Nothing too fancy. Uh, let's return cat fact worker here with the client it's going to be C and we call it a day. So let's make a function here on our cat fact worker. So we're going to say a uh, func, uh, let's do call it W or actually CW from CFW maybe cat fact worker A. Uh, it's going to be this cat fact worker thingy and we're going to say start. Uh, let's return an error here. Why not? So the first thing we're going to do is uh, because we have access to our Mongo client, we are going to get our collection from our database. So we're going to say call. That's going to be a CFW client. For some reason, I have this dyslectic client typing. Not quite sure why it's uh, been there for all my life. So CFW client, we're going to say database. Uh, let's call this 
uh, cat fact. That's fine. And yeah, like this. And then we're going to call collection on this. And our collection is going to call facts. Something like that, right? The next thing we're going to need is a ticker. A time ticker because uh, I'm going to show you real quick what we're going to do. So we have Thunder Client here. So let's do HTTPS double punt slash slash um, cat fact in Ninja. I think it's fact. Boom. Yes. So basically each time we're going to call this, it's going to spit out a random fact. And we are going to um, make a loop that basically is going to pull that endpoint. And each time we have a, a new fact, we are going to store that into our database, right? So we need a time, we need a ticker here. And this ticker is important because we don't want to constantly keep uh, polling at end point because that would be nasty so we're gonna give some some time maybe two seconds or something and each two seconds we're gonna poll or something else you can choose but make sure you don't overload the service right so we're gonna say ticker is gonna be a time new ticker and i'm gonna say two seconds a time second just like that <clears throat> and then we're gonna make a for loop right and each time you're going to wait for the ticker is channel, right? And so each two seconds, this channel is going to trigger. Uh, and then we're going to block until it's it's getting triggered each two seconds. And then we're going to loop and continue, right? Cool. So what we're going to do is we are going to say that the response error is going to be HTTP uh, get. And like I said, we're going to make this service, this uh, simple project, very lean and mean, right? That's my... my um, my advice, try to make things work first and then you can make it better, right? And if you have a lot of traction, you can make it faster. But don't do all these three things together because that will make sure you never complete a project, right? So HTTP GET, uh, I'm going to hardcode this real quick. We're going to say HTTPS, uh, CAT, FACT, NINJA, uh, slash FACT, that's it. If there is an error, I'm going to return the error and... Then we're going to say var the fact, or maybe the cat fact we just fetched. That's going to be a bson.m. And that's basically, what the hell is that? Yes. So bson.m is going to be uh, also from the package we actually installed. So instead of Mongo here, we're going to say bson. And bson is, um, I think it's binary serialized object notation. Not quite sure. It's basically JSON. But um, hey, go Google it. It's basically some kind of a JSON representation of your document, uh, binary MongoDB kind of uh, serialization. Look it up um, if you really want to actually want to know in depth what it is, right? So, but consider the BSON just like some kind of a JSON document, right? Uh, and this is basically, if you're going to check what it is, uh, it's a primitive M. That is basically uh, not what we want to see. But a matter of fact, this is basically just um, a map of string to any, right? Or a map to string interface, like uh, back in the days, right? For the OGs, right? This is basically what BSON M is, right? So then we're going to say if R is going to be JSON, new decoder, and that's going to be the response body, uh, decode me this cat fact, right? We're going to decode everything into the cat fact, and we're going to say if there is an error, and that error is not null, we're going to just return the error here. Fine. And let us print out this cat fact thing real quick to see if it's working. Print uh, ln. And we're going to say cat fact, just print out the whole shebang. So we have this client here. Um, we're going to say that the worker is going to be a new cat fact worker we're going to put the client in and then we're going to say worker start and normally uh, this will block here right so go run main.go <clears throat> call declared not used of course of course of course let's basically do this real quick so the compiler is happy right you can see each time each two seconds it's basically grabbing as a cat fact uh, from the cat fact api hey Thanks God, something uh, exists like that. <clears throat> that's cool. So that's already working. So now we have our call. What we're going to do here is uh, instead of printing it out, we're going to store it to our MongoDB. So <clears throat> I think it's something like the response, maybe the result actually. Result error is going to be call. Uh, insert one. 
context. Uh, let's call it context to do. Normally you could give a context background or something else, but hey, I'm just gonna um, do to do and call it a day. And the next thing we're gonna do is basically insert uh, our document and it's gonna be the cat fact. Just like that. And then we're gonna have um, this error. We're gonna say if the error is not null, we're gonna return an error. And otherwise we have this result. And to be honest, I don't care about the result. Right. Okay, cool. That's that. So we have our worker and um, we're gonna basically say go here, right? Because we're gonna spin up our uh, JSON API. And uh, if we don't specify go before worker start, then it's basically gonna block on this for loop and then we cannot, we will never uh, reach here, this code, right? Okay, cool. So that's that's already set. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a server real quick. Uh, server is gonna be a structure. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna copy the client, the Mongo client, because we're gonna fetch, uh, we need access to the client because we're gonna fetch um, our cat facts we stored in uh, from our worker, right? So um, what we're gonna do is let's make a constructor a uh, new server. Uh, C is gonna be the client. Actually, it's gonna be a Mongo client. And we're gonna return a pointer to the server. We're gonna say return me this server, and the client is going to be the C. All that. Then we're gonna make a handler. Uh, some some handler, some API handler, uh, we are gonna call each time we're gonna try to fetch a fact. That's gonna be S server. We're gonna call this handle get all facts or something. Just like that. It's gonna be a W, it's gonna be an HTTP response writer. Response writer, then we're gonna have an R, which is an HTTP pointer to an HTTP request. We're not gonna uh, make these handl handlers more uh, idiomatic with an error and all that stuff. We're just gonna use the simple things because we're gonna make it work real quick. Uh, consider this like a, some kind of an idea, a business idea, a very simple business idea, and you wanna quickly prototype something out to show to your, hey, I don't know, CTO, CEO, whatever, a friend, your mom, dad, whatever. So uh, handle all facts. What we're gonna do here is um, let us do the same thing here. We're gonna fetch uh, our uh, collection. And then we're gonna say something like, I think it's cursor. Cursor R is going to be call get find. Can we do nil? We need a context, that's for sure. Context to do again. And then we need to specify a query. The question rather is, can we do nil? because we don't want to query, we want to fetch them all. I'm not quite sure. If there is an error, and that error is not nil, um, let's just make it dirty and um, lock fatal out this error real quick. <clears throat> so we're going to say if error is going to be the cursor all context to do, uh, what's going to be the results? That's going to be results. It's going to be a slice of B sum M. Uh, let's log fatal here. You could also panic, but I think panic is just uh, a nasty representation. And then we're gonna say um, W header, actually write. We're gonna write the header real quick. That's gonna be status 200. We could do HTTP status okay. Just like that. And then we're gonna say W. We're gonna actually do this. JSON new encoder W encode the results. That's what we want. And to be honest, uh, if you really wanna do it good, we're gonna say we, uh, W header add. And we're gonna say content uh, type. And that's gonna be application JSON, right? Just like that. That's actually uh, perfect, fine, perfectly fine. All right, so that should be good. The next thing we're gonna do is, um, to be honest, maybe we could 
hey, this is what it is. So we have this, we have our go worker start, so it's gonna work, it's perfectly fine. And then we're gonna say HTTP um, handler, handler func, I think handle func by the way. And we're gonna say slash facts. We could first of all gonna uh, boot up our server, we're gonna say server is a new server. We're gonna give him the client, the MongoDB client, so we have access, and then we're gonna say our handler is gonna be server get all facts. And then we're gonna boot up our server, we're gonna say HTTP, listen and surf. Uh, let's say port 3000. And then we're gonna say nil here because we don't need any handler. All right, cool. So uh, let's recap, we have our client here. We're gonna make a new a new MongoDB client. Basically the local host uh, 27,017 is the classic default MongoDB port. port. Then we have a worker, which is basically a catfact worker. We're gonna start that up in another Go routine, so it can basically keep pulling and uh, store new catfacts. Then we're gonna boot up our server. And we're gonna expose uh, a route, an API route, which is basically just gonna be slash facts. And we're gonna boot up the server here with HTTP listen and serve on port 3000. Let's see if it's gonna work. Boom. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is open up this new request here. Uh, and instead of doing cat facts, we're gonna call to our localhost, localhost 3000 uh, facts. Uh, document is nil, okay, cool. That's the thing that I was thinking. So the problem is what we need to do here is instead of, um, where is nil? Here, here, here. Instead of call find nil, I think we need to do something like uh, the query. And that's gonna be a B some M, just like that. I'm gonna make an empty one, right? I'm gonna put this query inside of it. I think I think that uh, should work perfectly fine. Not quite sure. Just sometimes you need to try and to fuck around with things to actually explore, right? Uh, it's all good. It's working. Let's do it again. All right. You see, so we have these cat facts here. It's perfectly working. Um, I think we all had line 50. If we do it again, we should have more. Exactly, 72, because we are continuously scraping more cat facts, right? <clears throat> All right, that's basically it. We um, did some basic API uh, calling, a get API get calling in Golang. We basically booted up uh, our MongoDB storage, insert some documents, retrieve some documents. Very lean and mean, and maybe in the next episode, if I come back to this, uh, I'm going to refactor it because there's a lot of things we can do. We could use interfaces to make our application uh, more maintainable, more readable, and all that stuff, and extendable and testable. Uh, but I think for a beginner Golang engineer, if you want to learn Golang or you're coming from another language, this is a very nice way to start to see what's possible, and so you can actually start playing around with this. The link of this repository will be in the description. If you like these videos, consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave some questions in the comments. Check my YouTube channel because there's a lot of more advanced content for you um, for every single level of engineers and for the people that really want to be a savage Golang engineer, microservices, distributed systems, blockchains. Check out my Patreon page. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video. Peace.